Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast, or we should say the infamous Reselling Rebels podcast. Um, And yes, this is probably what, episode, I don't know, six or seven, something like that, I've already forgot, which is terrible as normal. Um, And this one is going to be the rise of YouTube in reselling. Now don't worry. I'm not going to be going into how to start a YouTube channel and all the very basics of YouTube. It is going to be related to reselling. Um, We're going to be discussing a little bit about the reselling community on YouTube. We're going to be discussing the positives and negatives of reselling on YouTube um, and all that sort of stuff. And it's a very, very self-indulgent and almost selfish topic for me to do this one because you all know or you may be all aware at this point of how much I love YouTube and how much I love to talk about it so yeah that's going to be this week's topic now next week's topic is going to be something a bit interesting to be honest i'm starting to get a little bit um i suppose i suppose it's starting to get a little bit harder for me to define topics each week because of course i've done i've been on youtube for so long and i've done so many topics on thursday talks and other videos that i've done it's kind of hard keeping the topics fresh and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to create a fresh topic each week that I haven't really touched upon too much in the past Um, so it might get to the stage where we're kind of recycling old topics from Thursday talks and things like that but at the moment I'm trying to keep them fresh and on that theme actually and I didn't actually plan this but the topic for next week is actually keeping reselling fresh so of course what we mean by that is I'll just briefly go into it very quickly is I mean you know when we've been when, when we've been reselling for four or five years or let's say there's resellers out there have been reselling for 10 years because I know a lot of the people watching this podcast will be my regulars and they have been reselling for quite a long time you know we want to keep it fresh so how do we do that what do we what do we do to keep it fresh all that sort of stuff so that's what we're going to be going into next week but for now let's get on with the topic at hand let me get you ready for some listing hopefully you will get some listing done in this session a good little bit of listing um it's probably going to come in at around 45 minutes something like that this podcast um and yeah without further ado we'll get on with the first point i have today um And I've literally just put here, discuss a little bit about the beginnings of reselling on YouTube. Now, I did try and do a little bit of research over on the US resellers to see kind of who was the first. Now, I didn't do a lot of research. I literally looked at a couple of channels and that was it. Um, The problem is on YouTube, you can't filter when you do a search. Let's say you search reselling on YouTube. And uh, you can filter them by loads of different things. You can even filter them by upload date. But as far as I was aware, you can't filter by upload date oldest first. Now, if I could do that, I could easily get up all the different resellers and where they kind of came in in their chronology, um, in the kind of chronology of reselling on YouTube. But what I did know is that Global Voodoo is one of the early ones. He's been doing it since 2011. I think there is a few others. I know Nick's mentioned a few of the names, but I can't remember them now. But there might be a couple of others who were just a little bit before Global Voodoo. So it might have been around 2010, but definitely 2011. 2010, 2011, when we signed really started to slowly get... Well, not really get going, but it slowly started to get going on YouTube. And certainly by 2012, 2013... Uh, we had resellers like Golden Finger Picker and Think Hearts Pickers as well. And Craigslist Hunter was a little bit later, I think, actually. We had Steve Rakin, I believe he was 2012 as well. So, you know, 2012, 2013, it started getting building then. Um, of course, over in the UK, the two earliest ones, as far as I'm aware, are Joe, who is uh, Joe reselling for pennies, um, and then Tom the English Picker as well. As well as that also, who was very, very early on, was Caroline, Caroline Mrs. M. I don't know whether she was doing reselling specific videos for a while. Um, I think she was doing more beauty videos and stuff for a while, but she did. She was an early YouTuber as well, and then obviously she transitioned to more reselling. As far as I'm aware, obviously these people could tell you in a bit more detail about their own journeys. Um, And then, of course, we had Nick, in I think the early part maybe of 2014 something like that and then after that loads of people started cropping up we had uh, next kind of round of people was smart reselling and Zaheer people like that and then we had um, all in the space of about two months 
we had me, Ben, Ben Fitzpatrick, and Rachel, fake Rachel, all come up on YouTube, along with loads of other people. And then in 20, that was in 2015. And then in 2016, 2017, it just got crazy and people were just popping up channels like, like, I don't know what really. And then obviously 2018, 2019, it's been a similar story, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. So it, it, it had a very, very slow start, 2010, 2011, just a few US resellers kind of thing popping up. Then we started to get going with, uh, you know, all the now quite big channels, actually, in, in Steve Rakin and Craigslist Hunter. Uh, we had those coming kind of thing. And obviously at a similar time or maybe a little bit after, we had um, the, the UK reseller, reselling scene really start up. Um, and yeah, so... It, that's kind of how it was that was kind of the, the chronology of it in sort of i would say maybe 2016 2017 probably about 2016 the u.s reselling community really started to take off like it really went crazy could have even been possibly 2015 but 2015 2016 and now of course craigslist hunter and waking profit there might even be another couple actually because i think wheezy resells actually he has over 100k so they all have over a hundred thousand subscribers um so yeah it really started to gain rapidly um 2015 2016 possibly even 2017 over in the u.s and then we felt a little bit of that in the UK reselling community. Channels started to grow a little bit more. Um, obviously, more recently with Nick's kind of viral videos that he's done, uh, he's really taken off. And then that's obviously positively impact, impacted a lot of others. So, yeah, that's kind of a bit of the timeline of it. A little bit of a disjointed structure there. But it's, it's a general kind of way of how it happened. Um so I also, yeah, I've just touched upon Nick's channel uh, gaining a little, bit, a little bit more popularity. So next is discuss the implications of more viewers um, and all that sort of stuff, really. So more viewers on these videos. I mean, when it back, you know, 2010, 2011, when it's just few re select re uh, US resellers, you know, not getting many views all the rest of it. Yeah, you know, it's a drop in the ocean. It doesn't really matter. Nothing's kind of... There's not really much of an implication there. The odd, the odd part-time seller coming about from a video is perfectly fine. Um, but obviously now, with the vastness of it and with how crazy it's got... I mean, I never... When I first started watching Nick, he had probably around 3,000 subscribers back in mid-2015. Now he's got, what, 10 times that? So 32,000, something like that, 32, 33,000. I never imagined Nick to be on that at all. Never imagined. And not to say that I doubted his ability to do it. I just thought it was like a crazy number, you know, back at the time when it was 2015. You, you wouldn't think that someone would be on 32,000 in a few years' time. And even myself, when I was on 100 subscribers, 200 subscribers, I never imagined to get to 3,500. And, uh, and you know, because cause that at the time was where Nick was at. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going to... Uh, well, I thought I, I might do one day, but it was a day way far off in the future. It wasn't, it wasn't now, yet here I am, here it is. So it, it, it's crazy, but because of that such expanse, I suppose... Uh, with all these people watching these videos, of course, a lot of them, we have to admit, probably, I don't know a percentage, but maybe let's say a rough guess is 40 or 50% of them, because it is probably quite a lot, are just watching for entertainment purposes. And yeah, they might sell the odd item of theirs on eBay or whatever, but they're not really doing reselling. And then maybe let's say 50 or 60% of people are actual resellers. There might be a few people who disagree with me there. Maybe it's a little bit more on the reseller's side, so it might be more like 70, 30, something like that. But I really do think there is quite a lot of people that are watching for entertainment. And Craigslist, Craigslist Hunter did a poll on this, so he did a, I think he did a video or something, where he said, throwing the, and this was ages ago, this was a couple of years ago, where he said, throwing the comments down below, if you watch these videos for entertainment or if you are a reseller. And I think he did get quite a lot of people saying that they watch the videos for entertainment. So, you know, we've got that, but of course, with the increased audiences are going to come a lot more people who want to get involved with reselling, whether it be seriously, whether it be um, as a hobby or whatever it may be. There's going to be a lot more part-time and full-time resellers because of this. Now, for a while, 
I was kind of thinking, and I, and I said this quite openly, so I'm going to contradict myself here, but obviously, as times change, opinions change. Um, so, you know, my opinion might change again on this in the future. I'm not sure. But obviously, I've said in the past that, oh, I don't think reselling has affected eBay negatively or, you know, eBay reselling or Amazon reselling negatively. Well, really, I should withdraw that statement because it's quite clear to see now um, that, that it has. It has affected it negatively in terms of the amount of people selling. There are, of course, a lot of positives to YouTube that I will touch on in a minute. But from the standpoint of more people reselling and more competition, it has affected it negatively. And I think if people can't see that, then they're kind of blind. Is it blindsided? Is that the right word? I think, it, I think it's blindsided, the phrase. Anyway, it's, it doesn't sound quite right, that blindsided. Blindsided? I don't know. Anyway, you know what I mean. But I think if people can't see that, they're kind of like a little bit blind to it. Because I do think it has negatively impacted it. And, uh, of course, with more sellers online, maybe not as many customers to match up to those new sellers. So, therefore, you know, you get a little bit of saturation in the marketplace. It's just natural, really. So... Yeah, we have got that, and, and that is, in some regard, it is an issue, you know, it is an issue. Now, the way we counteract that, or really what you have to do, is get in early on the YouTube scene. So, for example, if you, let's say, started a channel in 2012, 2013, uh, not to say you can't start a channel now, but let's say you were like Steve Rakin, who started a channel in 2012, He's got a cushion with YouTube because I'm sure he makes more than enough money with YouTube uh, to cover his basic bills. I mean, he's getting, what, quite a few thousand views a month. I could I could work it out roughly how much he's getting as an income if I knew the amount of views he's getting. But I think he's getting around 500, 600,000 views a month, which if we say uh, a CPM, which is a cost per mil, which is the amount of money he'll get per thousand views, is let's say $4.00. Uh, which is quite average, to be honest. It might even be a bit more than that, but $4 times by the 5, uh, 500,000 views, you're getting two grand a month, basically, $2,000 a month. Now, that's enough to cover some bills, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, you see what I mean? If you, get, if you got in early on on the YouTube community, it wouldn't matter that eBay was saturated as much because you could earn a good chunk of that money back from being savvy and getting in with the YouTube community. So, but but then that's only to do with a, the select few who really put in the work and who really cultivate a channel and all the rest of it and get in at the right time and all that sort of stuff. So if you're really, really savvy, you can do that and then you, you've covered yourself really. But if you're not savvy, if you've not done a YouTube channel or if you, you refuse to start one now, well, not necessarily refuse, but if you just don't want to start one now, then you're kind of in a bad position. Because you're thinking, well, I'm, all these other YouTubers are saturating the marketplace a little bit more. Um, and I'm only relying on eBay. And, and, and they're taking a little bit of a business away from me. You could, also, you could almost look at it in that way. Um, if no one was doing YouTube, then it might be a little bit healthier. I think it would uh, on eBay. So, therefore, in one way, a lot of the reseller YouTubers, if we're looking, looking at this analytically, if we're looking at this objectively rather than putting our emotions into it, let's say, uh, we could say that the reseller YouTubers are taking away the business from, or a little bit of a business from, the the more long-standing resellers who've been doing this way before YouTube, let's say, because they, they, they've come off, they're, they're kind of worse off, because obviously before YouTube, they were fine. Now, after YouTube, they're, they're not fine, um, or the, maybe, you know, it impacts them a little bit. So, I did want to discuss a little bit of the negative side of that, but because we have to have a little bit of an element of negativity in this video because there is a little bit of negativity within this topic. So that's kind of more of the negative side of it. I also now wanted to touch upon a huge, huge positive side of it for not only the the people who actually take up um, the, the idea of actually doing videos and actually get a channel and start producing videos and there's nothing to say that you can't start now it may be a little bit harder, but let's say that you're someone who's firmly planted in the reselling community on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. And let's say you have a good few followers on Instagram or Facebook and you've communicated with people and 
you, you know, people know you basically. Even though they know you've not got a YouTube channel, they know you from Instagram or Facebook. So that's a really good starting point, that is actually, because yes, it might be hard to set up a channel now because obviously it's harder to rank in search and you can't really get much organic search tra traffic from a lot of reselling videos anymore and all the rest because it, it's too saturated. Um, so, but, but the way of going about it is you can promote it on your fairly well built up Instagram and Facebook accounts and people will know you and if your content's fairly good they're gonna be happy to kind of jump on board and maybe they'll even share it with people and then you can grow that way kind of thing um so you know it's not to say you can't do it and it's not to say that you can't actually grow a really strong channel from that and a perfect example of this and I'm sure you won't mind mind me saying this is is George, George Ross so what he's done is he's he's been present in the Facebook and Instagram communities for quite a while. I mean, more so Facebook, but, you know, he's got a following over on Facebook and Instagram, all the rest of it, um, with regards to just hanging out in the communities, getting to know people for actually years at this point. So because of that, when he started up his YouTube channel, he, he, he was getting loads of subscribers because it's basically all those people who are friends with him, who have networked with him, essentially, that are then jumping on his channel, and then that's giving him a, a boost. And because his content is such good content, it's naturally just taken off more in search and all the rest of it from those first few people who have joined. People, I'm assuming, people are sharing his channel and stuff as well, which is brilliant. So, you see it can still be done and, and there's no reason why you shouldn't do it and there is a lot of positives even now despite it being quite a saturated market on youtube with resign the positives are still there and you can still gain positives from it so uh, as i said i've just wrote down here discuss the positive side of youtube what it has given us as resellers um so yeah i wanted to discuss a little bit about the community now and the positive aspect of the community so of course, no doubt, no doubt as YouTube, as well as Facebook and Instagram, given us huge positives as a community. Obviously, I discussed a little bit about Facebook and Instagram um, in another video. I think it was one of the earlier podcasts, episode one or two or something. And, um, you know, I discussed about a few of the negatives with them. But the positives are overwhelming. This idea of the water cooler at an office or anything like that or or even just a, a break room or something like that, whatever it may be, we don't have that in reselling. Um, but we do have that in reselling in the form of the YouTube community specifically as well. I mean, Facebook and Instagram as well, but the YouTube community in the form of, oh, well, when we take a break, we can have a cup of tea and we can watch someone on, on YouTube. And it feels a little bit human there and it feels like we're getting a little, little bit of interaction there. So it's massive. It's absolutely massive in that regard. Real, real positive. It humanizes reselling, which is which is huge. Um, because before I was a reseller, if you had asked me what a reseller is, or oh, I don't, I don't even think I really knew what a reseller was. But um, if you had asked me, you know, what an eBay seller was, I wouldn't have necessarily thought of someone, you know, just a normal person. Basically, I would have thought of like a a bigger business, you know, someone in a warehouse doing it with with staff and employees and stuff. And obviously there are those people out there who do it on that scale. But, you know, it humanizes the kind of the the genuine just one person doing this in the shed, in the garage, in the spare room, whatever. It humanizes that as just anyone can do this. You know, anyone can do this and you know, I'm just a normal person like you, and let's get in touch. Let's let's have some chat in the comments as well. Uh, you can get involved with the, with the content. You can ask me questions on live streams and stuff. And it just humanizes it. It brings the community together. Not only, as I say, the new resellers who might be thinking, "Oh, well, can it be done? Can you can you actually resell random items on eBay?" Uh, not it not only kind of humanizes that element and brings that closer to the person in need of it. But it also just gives, you know, the, the long-standing resellers a chance to chat and all the rest of it. And that's why, really, I feel the live streams have been so popular. Because 
it's a lot more interactive than just the pre-recorded videos. And that's why, obviously, on the pre-recorded videos, you still get quite a lot of comments because people are still wanting to interact with you in that comment form, essentially, and want to give their opinion on maybe the stuff you bought or they want to give uh, give you some advice or they want to simply ask you a question or whatever. And that really does tie up the community nicely and it makes it feel a bit more like a water cool, uh, certainly with the lives. The lives feel like a water cooler moment or a, or a break room moment where, oh, someone's, you know, Steve's just live or Nick's just live or just pop in. And obviously all your, your colleagues are in there, let's say, or your friends or whatever you want to call them. And uh, you can chat with them. And it does really feel genuinely like a water cool, uh, water cooler moment. Now, I wanted to talk about the business opportunities for the resellers who are who have chosen to produce videos now. So obviously that's in the minority of people uh, listening to this. I always, you know what I always do? I always say watching. When I'm when I'm recording this podcast, I always say, "Oh, thanks for watching," but you didn't actually watch, did you? So you're listening. Uh, so that's going to be in the mi- minority of the people listening to this. But I'm sure there are those who are listening to this who do have uh, YouTube ch- channels centered around reselling as well. So there are a lot of business opportunities uh, for those who are obviously producing the content and these can come in various different forms now i wanted to talk about a few of the sponsorship opportunities i've had now you may be thinking sponsorship opportunities what are you on about you've got a channel with 3500 subs don't sponsorship opportunities come to only those with a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand well yeah i thought that for quite a while actually But it turns out there are people who want to get in touch and want to work with you and want to give you stuff and make, you know, want you to review it and stuff. And uh, although it's on a lot lower scale, as you may imagine, you know, I'm not getting requests to, uh, oh, just Adam, here you go, review this brand new iPhone 10, you know, and we'll give it you for free. I'm not talking things like that, but I just actually wrote down a few of the ones that I remember. Obviously, I have my email located in the description box for business inquiries and just general questions from people and all the rest of it. And obviously, these sponsorship companies use the email and get in touch with me every now and then. Now, I, you know my feelings on sponsorship. I do not do sponsorship, so I either ignore the emails or I respond and just say, sorry, I don't do sponsorship. Um, and the only two brands that I would really consider... Well, it's kind of gone up to three now because I'm wearing a lot more Ralph Lauren. Now, I've never really been a materialist, materialist in the sense of branded clothing or the rest of it, and if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that of me. But anyway, I have to admit that recently I've been buying a little bit more Ralph Lauren and I've really been enjoying the quality. So I might even include Ralph Lauren in my little very, very tightly knit group of sponsor sponsors that I would actually consider. But the three are Ralph Lauren, Quorn, which is the, the vegetable protein or whatever, it, you know, whatever you call it. And then Innocent. So Innocent's movies, Quorn and then Ralph Lauren. So if any of those are out there and would like to sponsor me, then you know, get in touch and everything, but I won't I won't entertain really anything else. Now, there was one person who got in touch with me from, I wrote, as I say, I wrote them down here, so there was an Amazon FBA scanner app. I can't remember what it was called. It began with a P, and it's quite a well-known one, actually, or or it was, it was one that was starting to get some traction. Anyway, so they contact me, and I don't know how much they would have paid me. I'm thinking... Because uh, I think someone else actually took up the sponsorship opportunity and told me about it. Something told me how much he got. I think it was around a hundred quid that they were going to offer me for a video. Uh, obviously, I don't know though because this is just going off a of third party, you know, third party information. They didn't. The company didn't actually tell me this themselves. But you know, it might have been around a hundred quid. I don't know. It might have been a bit less. They might have given me something for free. They might have given me the app for free or something if it was a paid for app. I can't remember. But basically, I got he's got in touch and said, you know, we're an Amazon scanner app for sellers, all the rest of it. Would you like to, um, you know, promote it? Would you like to be a sponsor for it and just do a video and we'll give you whatever? Uh, well, we didn't say what the figure, as I say, but we'll give you something or whatever he said on the email. Um, but yeah, basically, obviously, it would been it would have been very in keeping with my brand. It would have been a very very good thing to do, really, on my part. But. You know what I'm like, I do not do that sort of stuff because I feel, um, this I suppose somewhat comes into philosophy, but 
I feel that really it's very, very hard for a human to be objective when they are getting paid for something, right? So if you're getting paid... Now, if you're getting paid for something that you use anyway and that you've used for 10 years or 5 years in the case of Innocent or Quorn for me uh, and you've just been attached to them from the, from the get-go, you just love them genuinely, then that doesn't matter because you're already subjective with them and, and before you even received any payment or anything you just love them anyway genuinely and that's a genuine love so you can promote that genuinely but if you're getting a bit of money for it it kind of makes you think oh well i might need to play this up a bit i might need to you feel the need to maybe uh do a little bit more on the positive side rather than the negative so and, and i don't want to appear that way for people and i don't want to say something that's a little bit ingenuine um and therefore people go and get this app or get this product and, and it's not quite what we were expecting or anything. I want to be genuine and I want to be coming from a place of love and passion for those items. So, you know, a good marker for me really is if you're going to be sponsored by someone is how long have you used it yourself? Have you used it for five years? Have you used that product for 10 years? And do you just genuinely love it before any sponsorship even came about? That's a good marker. Um, for me personally, in my personal philosophy with sponsorships, um, but then there's people out there who will get a sponsorship and they may have only used it once, they may have never used it, and they're, they're doing a spot. Well, you know, come on, to me, I know people can disagree with this, and that's fine, and that's their prerogative. And if people want to do sponsorships when they've not used a product before, or they've not really been that well informed on a product, or anything like that, then that's their. Thing. they can do it great go for it that's your money that's your decision i just hope that you can live with it in terms of if you're being a little bit disgenuine um but for me i would say that's how it has to be you know and that's why i've always been wary about doing uh sponsorships but anyway that's that's that so i got an amazon fba scanner app uh, well i didn't get it but i got you know i got the sponsorship opportunity then more recently, someone contacted Actually, they've contacted me twice now, saying, would you review this kettle? And it's like this little seafood kettle. And to be honest, it's a nice kettle. So, you know, it's a nice kettle. So I was like, oh, that's a good kettle, that is. Uh, it's, about, it's probably about a 30 quid kettle or something. But it's just a nice kettle. It looks nice. Anyway, so um, I'm, and I'm sure it would be brilliant. I'm sure it would be brilliant. But, um, yeah, so there's a kettle to review. And... Um, Essentially, said, would you review this kettle over the rest of it? We'll, we'll send it you for free over the rest of it, you know. And, and obviously, it doesn't fit in with my brand, so I'm not going to do it anyway. But, um, yeah, it's, it's quite funny, you know. You get you get odd ones like that. And I've also had people saying, would you do a website review for me? And then I'll pay you or I'll do this or, or whatever. So I've, I've had a few people saying do website reviews. And, again, I don't generally accept them because of... The fact that if I've not used the... I'll do a website review on Amazon. I'll do a website review on eBay. Because I've used them. For, well, I do a website review on eBay every week in the form of my sales updates and stuff anyway, really. Because um, that's just kind of showing you the website. But, you know, I do a website review on those because I've used them for God knows how much of my life. Probably since I was very, very young, actually. And I trust them and they're good sites and all the rest of it. You know, obviously they have a few, a few flaws here and there, but they're good sites, genuinely. But, you know, I won't generally do website reviews on sites where people just get in touch and I've not really used them that much or they're not in keeping with my brand or anything like that. So I just won't do it, you know. Um, it's funny, though, because all my sponsors that I've said I would use aren't in keeping with my brand. So it's quite odd. But, um, no, I just, I just, I have, you guys who have been following me for a while, to wrap this up, because I've been rambling about sponsorships for five, ten minutes now. But um, you guys who have been with me from the start will know my feelings on sponsorship and will know that if I ever do a sponsorship, it will be very, very well considered. Um, I'm very, very scrupulous with it. And um, it might not be in keeping with my brand, but you can know one thing for sure. I come from a place of genuine love for that item. Um, if I am sponsoring, if, it, if, it, if I'm advertising it on my channel willy nilly and I would basically say yeah go out and get it without a shadow of doubt kind of thing uh, and that's why innocent corn things like that i'd say go out get it because i've used it for a long time yeah okay there might be the very very 
odd rare occasion where I might not have been completely satisfied sat satisfied with something with corn or with innocent but that's because they're food products and generally on a very rare occasions you will get those instances but you know I eat them week in week out or I drink them week in week out and they've been perfectly fine and, and I love them so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from anyway so that's that I won't ramble about that anymore because um, we've actually got quite a few comments as well to go for. I had quite a lot of comments on this. Um, so we're going to get to them at the end. And that might be a, a 20 minute affair. So um, anyway, so we've got... Do, 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 where are we here? Oh yeah, so we've also got... For people who produce videos, some of the positives again. are You also make more contacts. So obviously in my... Uh, career on YouTube I've had a numerous amount of people contact me saying oh I've got stuff would you like to buy it off me and most of the time I've said yeah sure I'll be up for buying it off you and I've got some of the actually yeah basically some of the biggest hauls I've ever had from having a YouTube channel if I didn't have the YouTube channel I wouldn't have got those hauls um, one that I made quite a bit of money on actually there was a haul that I yeah I did really really well in sales value off it uh, as well as profit of course but yeah, so con actually gaining contacts from YouTube, that's a huge positive of doing videos. And of course, we have to mention the obvious, uh, the ad revenue from Google AdSense. Of course, it's not good. It's not good. I've said on many, many occasions, it, you know, it really isn't good. For the amount of work I put in on YouTube, hours and hours every month, uh, I, I'd say I, I normally hover around $70, $60, $70 in ad revenue. Um, and you just think how many videos I've done, 727 or something at this point, And, you know, all these countless hours. It's not good. It's not good. If you've got a lot of views, yeah, it becomes something decent. But you have to have hundreds of thousands of views to make it decent. You know, if, if I was on, let's say, I'm on about 17, 18K views a, a month at the moment. And that gets me, I'd say, about $60, $70. If I was on, like, 500,000 views, yeah, that, that'd be, like, a full-time income for me. No doubt, that'd be all right, on, just on the AdSense alone. But 500,000 views a month, every month, that's, like, what's that, a year? That's, like, seven, six, seven million a year. Six million, I think it is, a year views. So, that's a lot. Um, so, you know, Google AdSense, it's there, it's present, you get a bit of money for it. It's a positive, of course, because I'm not going to say that negative, uh, that money, getting money from anywhere is, is a negative. It never, it's never a negative, but it's just su such a minimal amount of money that, you know, for the amount of work, when you compare it to the amount of work, um, that, yes, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not brilliant, really. But again, if you're thinking of setting up a YouTube channel and you can get to that 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, um, then, yeah, it's a little bit of something. And, of course, when you do a live stream, I'm always very, very thankful for if people give me a super chat because it does just add on a little bit extra to, uh, to the revenue at the end of the month. And considering the amount of hours I put in, I'm very grateful for it when people do that. So... Yeah, um, so you've also got that option as well, and you've got other external options with Patreon and all the rest of it, um, and then you can sell merch and stuff, like I've I've got merch accounts and stuff, um, and you know, there's loads of different ways of, of monetizing it really, but... Right, so next, another positive is just tips and information for new resellers that are struggling. So, of course, I have a lot of uh, eBay courses on my channel. I have a lot of uh, eBay-related videos, tips videos, all the rest of it going back four years ago. Um, you know, all over the last four years, I've done loads of different videos. So... Yeah, basically, when you've got, uh, you know, when you actually set up on YouTube, when you set up a channel reselling-wise, you kind of, you're giving new resellers a help in hand in the form of these tips and these videos. And again, we could go back to the negative element of that in the fact that you're inviting your own competition. But we kind of touched upon that a little bit more. So I want to try and keep this a bit more positive. So yes, there is a negative side to doing that in the form of releasing a course on eBay and then people you know, being able to, to capitalize on your knowledge that you've gained and your experience. But the positive element of it, just from a more human point of view, is the fact that you're helping people fulfill their dreams, do what they want to do, maybe even at some point have freedom from the rat race or freedom from, uh, you know, having to go to a nine to five job. Um, and of course, the ones who watch the videos 
um, and don't do any, you know, the ones who watch the videos, there, there might be certain number of them who just don't do anything anyway, and it doesn't amount to anything, um, it's only going to be those who actually want to put in a good amount of effort, who are really going to get to be someone uh, who really is a fierce competition for you, but of course you've also got to argue about the fact that uh, hobbyist sellers or part-time sellers in force uh, can fluctuate the market as well, so we've got that to consider, but Certainly, it's just lovely to, and it's lovely when I actually hear on Instagram, and I get so many messages, well, I say so many, I get maybe once a week or something, I get a message a couple of times a week, something like that, uh, where someone will say, oh, thank you for this video, it really helped me out, or I've had many, many comments over the years of people saying, oh, you, you know, you've really helped me out with reselling, and I owe, like, part of starting up my business to you kind of thing, and that is really, like, it, it's... I don't, I don't, I, as you can see, or as you can hear, I'm kind of speechless, or maybe you can't hear it actually because I'm speechless, but I, I just, every time someone says that, it's the most humbling is the right word, but I want to use a different word than humbling because it gets used so much humble, you know, everyone says humbling, it's humbling. I want to use a different word, it's kind of just so lovely, so beautiful so incredible that people say that you know and um and if i've managed to help someone get somewhere in their life with reselling you know in, in particular with reselling then that's that's just absolutely amazing so yeah there's a huge satisfaction and positive around doing youtube and um obviously being able to help people or even just being people in the community and and being able to help those who are producing videos because it works both ways really people can obviously help you when you're maybe getting a few of your facts wrong or whatever in a video from time to time they can help you in the comments and you can help them with other things in in other different videos so yeah it's just it's really really lovely uh in terms of you know in terms of that so i'm gonna just open up my phone and i'm gonna go on instagram in a minute because well, i'm gonna go on instagram on the post now um because you know what will happen i'll get into a diva with it in a minute and i won't be able to open it quick enough and it's not loading at the moment which is brilliant but we'll see how it goes anyway so there is one more uh oh there we go it's loaded cool so we'll get on to the instagram comments and the youtube comments in a minute uh but with a couple uh, there's one more point actually here so i wanted to discuss the downside of youtube uh, in the form of being a create, uh, content creator, a reselling content creator. So, of course, burnout is a major one. So, of course, I've had major periods of burnout with my with my YouTube and also even with my reselling, to be honest, because I work, when I work, I work quite intensely and uh, and therefore you can only sustain that. For I don't care if you're some sort of superhuman god or whatever, you, you're still only going to be able to sustain that for X number of time. You, the amount of time you might be able to sustain working from, let's say, 6 o'clock in the morning till 8 or 9 at night, something like that, uh, might be longer than I can, um, but you're going to burn out at some point. You know, everyone's going to burn out if you're doing work like that on that scale. That's, what, 15 hours a day, and obviously some people might even do way more than that. Um, obviously, with a few breaks and stuff spread throughout the day, but if you're working that intensely, like sometimes I can do, um, you, you are going to suffer from burnout. So I had a, a, a probably a period about four weeks or six weeks back in, 2016 2017 where I was doing daily videos so that was seven days a week doing a video a day um and I was trying to do them fairly fairly well videos as well I, fairly good videos I wasn't say I wasn't as good as the editing as I am now uh, or as conscientious with the editing as I am now and even now in two years time hopefully I'll be even more conscientious with my editing and stuff um and and just looking when I say conscientious, I mean actually looking out for the viewer. So I don't mean necessarily doing all the uh, flashes and all the bangs and stuff that I like to do occasionally in my editing. I mean conscientious in the fact of, you know, doing cuts when cuts are necessary and making a video flow and have uniformity in some regard, as much as you can get uniformity with me. Um, but you know what I mean? And just, and just really bringing the viewer into my attention while I'm editing the video so I know that they're getting a great experience. Um, 
But yeah, so I burnt out. I burnt out after doing about four to six weeks of YouTube back then, of a video a day, as you would, and trying to do my resign at the same time and other stuff. I think I was, uh, obviously I will have been doing Amazon and eBay back then and probably other stuff and stuff on the side. So, yeah, burnout is a big one. I'm seeing this at the moment a little bit. We had, uh, I wouldn't say KLC Resign was burnt out or anything with YouTube, um, but obviously she didn't do a video for a couple of weeks, and then she's recently done a video yesterday, and she talked about how the fact that she is just wanting to freshen up on YouTube, do a few different videos kind of thing, opposed to just doing the hauls and stuff like that. I, I heard on a comment, actually, uh, it's actually on one of these comments on Instagram that I'm going to read out, but someone said about Nix, and I've not seen this video, so I can't quote him on this or anything, but they said on this comment that Nick was apparently taking a bit of a step back from YouTube. Obviously, he'll still be doing it, I'm sure, but maybe not doing as much. Uh, obviously, this isn't to do with burnout or anything, but Caroline and Phil, the Celtic traders, they've actually gone off their resign channel, but that's obviously because they've got other channels to contend with. It's kind of to do with burnout, because obviously we can't manage all these different channels, but at the same time, it's not directly burnout. But, you know, you do get that. You do get that with YouTube, and that's one of the negatives of of doing it, really, and, and just burning out like that. But I've always found, when I look back at the content that I've done, even though I've got burnt out here and there, I'm really pleased that I've pushed myself to the limit and put out all the content that I've done. Like, this year has been major for content for me. Uh, if you've been following me since the start of this year, you'll know how much content I've been producing June, I actually did, well, basically June, I did almost a video a day. I mean, there were some days I didn't do videos every day, but, you know, for a long time, I was doing a video every couple of days, all that sort of stuff. I still am really now doing a video every couple of days with the podcast and with Thursday Talks and with maybe a haul or sales update in the week as well. So, yeah, you know, it's been major this year, but I look back on it, I think I'm so glad I put in all that hard work because the, the thing I'm most proud of this year and I know it's the thing that's not got the most views, but I don't really care about that. The thing I'm most proud of is the eBay courses and the podcast, this podcast that I'm doing now. The eBay courses and the podcast, between them, cover a good range of stuff. And if you were to watch all the podcast episodes that I've done so far, which is only about six or seven, and I'm, I'm, I'm determined to do a lot more, so you know, it'll, it'll increase the backlog and the knowledge that you can gain. But if you are a new reseller and you watch all the podcasts and then you watch all the courses and really absorb the knowledge, you've got all the tools you need in those videos to start reselling professionally, do it really, really well. Um, there's, there's nothing, I would say, that I've not really covered in those courses. I know it's quite a bold statement to make, but bear in mind that's over, what, about... 12 or 13 videos some of which are almost an hour long so obviously in those, in those 12 or 13 videos I feel like I've covered a vast selection of what you need maybe not everything but a vast selection um so yeah they're the things I'm most proud of this year and I'm really really glad I did them but yeah it did get to me and I was almost starting to feel a bit of burnout with, with YouTube in that regard so also the other negative from YouTube is it takes time away from your main income um and what does it say? In, income in me alone. Oh, and... Oh, here we go, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Money from AdSense alone doesn't really warrant the time. Obviously, I've just told you how much I earn roughly with AdSense a month. It's not worth the time, right? And most people would agree with that. Um, so, of course, it takes valuable time out of your main business. And this is what I've suffered from. I've wanted to put more time into YouTube than my main business on, on many occasions. And uh, and that's not good, really, because you need I need the money for my main business. That's the thing that makes me the money, uh, makes me the most money. So when um, obviously when we're thinking about that, we need to make sure that we are doing YouTube as it should be done with its place. So not doing YouTube crazily, not focusing too much time on it, especially when you're a new reseller, just building your business slowly in the first year or so. Um, you know, you, you need to be focusing on your business and not on on, on YouTube reselling and stuff. Um, and, and maybe a good sort of standard is that you could set a number of videos that you do a week or you delegate a number of hours to YouTube a week or maybe you delegate half a day to it a week or a day to it a week. And, uh, and that's that. But... Um, yeah, that would probably be the best way to go. So maybe do, let's say, two videos a week or a video a week. Even if you just do a video a week. Mel did that for ages and loads of people have done it. I think 
Carla did that for quite a while with just her Sunday hauls and stuff. Just do a video a week, you know, and that's that. It won't take you very long. You're still going to get appreciation from people. People don't really expect more than a video a week. As long as you're doing a video a week and it's a fairly decent quality video when you're doing it, then people are going to be happy with that, in my experience. I only do two or three videos a week because I'm a nutter on YouTube who is obsessed with it and, and, and feels if, en if I do any less than that, I've completely failed. And, and that's not necessarily a failure in terms of an external failure. I feel that internally. I feel like I need to do this because it's my passion. I, I have so much passion for it. And, I, and I, I do feel like letting go to that extent would, would make me feel a little bit of a failure so that's why for god knows how long now i've i've always tried to do two or three videos a week because i'm obsessed with it it's weird um but yeah so money from adsense doesn't really warrant the time so you're gonna have to factor that in and, and just make sure that you are primarily focusing if you're if you're producing videos of course that you're primarily focusing on your reselling and not on the videos or even let's flip that on its head maybe you're not doing videos on on reselling but you are watching videos on Resign. Maybe delegate a number of videos to watch every day or every week or whatever. Maybe say, right, you know, I want to watch my videos. I want to watch my content creators. But I'm going to watch one 10-minute video a day. Or if that's not enough, because it won't be enough for some people, I'm going to watch three 10-minute videos a day or something. I don't know. Just set a number um, and then and then stick by it kind of thing. And then you'll be focused more on your Resign and less on YouTube. So... Let me go down this uh, f these few comments. So we've got Denim, Denim Green says, interesting topic as recently two popular channels on YouTube have ceased. Um, and I actually commented back saying, ah, which ones? I know Celtic Traders have. Uh, and then uh, she or he, I don't know whether it's she or he. Let me just click into their little, oh, it's a she, Judith. Hi there, Judith. Um, and then she said, Nick is scaling back. Now, as I say, I didn't, I've not checked that video from Nick or anything, so I don't know. But I'm guessing he's just doing a couple of videos less a week or something at this point. I'm not sure. But yeah, so that's interesting. And it was obviously interesting to note that since this is centered around uh, YouTube and Resign. We've got flipping, what, oh, I, I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. Flipping wham, oh, I'm going to butcher that. Flipping Whammin Man, man Whammin Man, oh sorry, sorry I can't pronounce it, you know who you are, you've got a little picture, I don't know what the breed of the dog is, but it's a breed of dog I actually quite like, um, oh it's a Shih Tzu, looks like a Shih Tzu, um, Tony C, anyway, so Tony C, um, yeah, I found out loads of things about, uh, about loads of things that I never knew. Uh, definitely a great learning experience every day and flipping more regularly. So, yeah, with YouTube, I definitely agree with that. You do learn a lot about different niches that you didn't have any clue on before. So, yeah, you know, it, that's one of the main positives about it as well. And just getting more breadth of knowledge for different areas and different things, basically. Uh, we've got George Ross, retro reselling. Um, nothing but positives for me. Helps promote me and my business with sales and contacts for buying stock. So again, like I touched on before about how it's really helped me with buying stock and all the rest of it and contacts. It has helped George in the same way as well. Uh, he also goes on to say in another comment, also great on a social level as they have made many new genuine friends. Yeah, brilliant as well. Yeah, that's exactly the same for me. Um, and I'd really, you know, one of my goals possibly for this year possibly for next year is um to actually meet up with some more people i've been going on the train more regularly i've been doing more things to kind of get my anxiety at bay and 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 bring it down a little bit more and uh, and i feel as if i can travel a little bit further to places and i feel as if i can slowly start to be actually more comfortable with going to places and meeting people that are kind of outside my comfort zone, let's say. So something for next year is actually trying to meet a few more of these genuine friends that I've made because there's so many people out there that I really do consider my friends and it's such a shame that we're op opposite ends of the country and stuff and also that I've, for quite a while, let my anxiety rule my life and I'm not going to, you know, BS anyone around that. That's what I've done for a long time. I've let my anxiety rule my life and... Um, I really want to try 
at this year and obviously next year to to really get out there a bit more and just feel a bit more positive and uh, and meet some of these friends that I've made over the past four years because obviously over the past four years I've only actually met has it been one or two? Yeah, two, maybe, two, oh, is it three? Maybe three. I, met, I might have met three resellers who I know are Facebook and YouTube or Instagram or whatever. I met the Celtic Traders. I met Josh uh, Howarth. I met, um, I met, I met a few others that aren't on YouTube but are on Facebook. Um, and yeah, but, you know, over four years, I've only met like three or four resellers. That's not brilliant. And, I, what I really do want to, I want to meet, I'd love to just literally like every month go to somewhere new and meet up with someone kind of thing. Um, and that would be awesome, just meeting all these different people. And, and obviously I can bring you guys with me in the form of doing vlogs or videos and stuff and it'd be so cool. Anyway, I'm just going to go over to YouTube on my community tab now. And we're going to look at one or two of the comments. I think I've got two comments over there on my community tab. Now don't forget the... Uh, probably the end of today the new community tab post with next week's topic will be coming out so if you do want to comment anything below that post any comments questions or queries for next week then please do so if you can't be bothered going over to the community tab don't worry just go down below in the comments drop your question down below there don't, no worries it's right below um or if you want to get in touch with me personally, if you want to have a little bit of a chat, as well as giving me your question or query for next week, then please do get in touch over on my Instagram account. The handle is in my description and it is on screen now as well. So yeah, just get involved. So yeah, we've got two comments over on YouTube this week. It's nice to see that the comments are actually coming in this week because for a few weeks, we've, you know, we've had the odd comment and stuff, but it's nice to see that we've got quite a few people uh, commenting and stuff this week. And I knew we probably would because... It's a little bit more of a polarizing topic. Um, so we've got Peter Ray's Adventures. Uh, well, it can be a lot of help and distraction. I limit myself to watching YouTube resellers as there are so many and I get distracted for hours. Um, also, I have learned so much from the resellers and made good contacts too. Without resellers on YouTube, I wouldn't be doing my videos and learning as I go. And wouldn't have stepped out of my, my and wouldn't have stepped up my eBay game either. Um, also met so many wonderful people, i.e. friends at meetups, and just makes me feel proud to be in the reselling community. Some areas, i.e. games, clothes, etc., are so flooded on eBay as we see countless YouTubers showing them in videos. In short, I limit myself to watching reselling videos and uh, lives as it's a distraction. So it's 50-50 whether it's a good thing. Yeah, I would very much agree with that, actually, Peter, and you made some good points there. Yeah, I think with clothing and games, so I mean, clothing, it seems to, a lot of people who do clothing seem to be selling it quite well still, but there are a lot of people who are selling it now, so yeah, it definitely could be one of them things that might be get starting to get flooded, but I'm not sure because I'm not really in the niche too much. Um, possibly games are getting a bit more, certainly board games and stuff are getting more flooded or have been for a while, so yeah, it's one of them evil or, and again, as you say, it's a distraction as well, so yeah, you've got to limit your time that you're spending on it and limit your kind of interaction with YouTube a little bit, whether it's on the video production front or whether it's actually watching resellers as well. Um, and then RetroBeats at Disc asks, um, maybe this is a question or maybe it's a statement, I'm really not sure. Is it more of a help or a good distraction? Um, I don't know. I don't know, really. I suppose... In one way, you're kind of saying the same thing there, aren't you? Is it more of a help or a good distraction? I suppose it is it is a bit of a good distraction because you are kind of learning something at the same time, you know, especially if you're a new reseller and you're learning about all these different niches and you learn about what sells for what price and stuff. So I suppose it can be a help and it can also be a good distraction, but when it does start to turn into a bad distraction, i.e. it's taking a lot of time away from your reselling specifically, your actual reselling work, um, then, you know, then it needs to be looked at and it needs to be thought, well, maybe I'm, you know, it's just like if you're at work and you're spending far too much time in the break room, you're going to get told off by a manager, oh, well, why are you always in the break room all the rest of it? You're never doing any work all the rest of it. So, you know, we don't have anyone there to tell us that. So we have to think to ourselves, hang on a minute, 
Am I spending a bit too much time around the water cooler watching these videos or whatever? Am I spending too much time making cups of tea and watching whatever Ad's doing on YouTube or whatever Ben, uh, not Ben, but whatever Nick's doing on YouTube or George is doing on YouTube or whoever? Um, so you, you've got to think like that and you've got to be a bit more autocratic on yourself every now and then um, so that then you can keep in line and, and things don't go astray basically. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. We've gone 54 minutes, so that's a nice little time there. Um, I'm amazed that actually after these podcasts, I'm, I better touch wood really, but after these podcasts, I don't really feel too hoarse with my voice. Um, but I'm actually not recording this on Wednesday, I'm recording this on Thursday. So I've got Thursday talks in a little bit and I've got to talk for another hour. So I've just done an hour of talking here and then I'm going to do an hour of talking later on. So I might have to kind of just do a bit of silent work for a couple of hours now. Uh, oh god, is it 11 o'clock? My god, it's, oh my god, I didn't realise that. So I've only got two hours till Thursday, so a bit less actually. Yeah, so I might have to be silent for a little bit now, um, and then obviously I can uh, do Thursday talks and maybe not get too hoarse. It is Thursday talks um, audio calling for the Discord today as well. So I will be putting a link down below all my videos for my Discord audio server. And what it basically is, is every week on Thursday talks, we're going to do a uh, audio calling from now on. And if, you know, if people are up for it, if they're not up for it, then we'll just do normal questions from the chat. It's, it's no biggie. If people don't want to do it, it's fine. But I thought I would try it. So, you know, people can sign up for Discord using the link down below. It's an invite It's an invite to my server. It's completely free to sign up. There's no cost sims or balls whatsoever. It's very, very easy to sign up. It's just an email and a, and a password kind of job. Um, and if you have a microphone on your computer, you can then on a, at 1 p.m. on a Thursday, go into the uh, little tab on Discord on my server called the call-in waiting room. And then I will be in the inner call-in kind of... Uh, channel on the server and then obviously i can drag a, a person over like individually and then what you'll get is you'll get one minute yeah i'm being very very harsh with this but you'll get one minute to ask me a question and whatever else you want to say uh like you know if you feel the need to scream oh my god you're the love of my life and do it i don't mind um in that one minute you know if you've got 30 seconds left and you've already answered your question go for it i don't mind i don't mind a compliment um but no anyway so uh, that's what's going to happen, and then we're going to get the question. This will all be broadcast through OBS, so everyone will be able to hear it on the live stream. Um, so it's going to be a bit more interactive and stuff with my audience. And uh, and that's that. And also, after the Thursday Talks is done, you're very welcome all week. Uh, you know, it might take off, it might not. It doesn't really matter if it does or it doesn't. But um, you're very welcome to stay in the Discord server. We've also got a text chat in there, just like sort of a, a, a messaging group chat kind of thing uh, where you can chat to other resellers. Or you can stay in the audio waiting room and you can just chat to people through the audio um, through that all week if you want up until... And then every week we do it on Thursday Talks as a more formal thing. So, you know, I thought that was quite cool and it, and it encourages a bit more... Uh, humanizing with my audience and because obviously when you text chat i always think text chat is a bit not necessarily dehumanizing but it's just not as personal as audio or video or anything like that so i think it's quite a good idea but i don't know whether it's going to take off i don't think i don't know whether people are going to like it or not but whatever happens happens and uh, and we'll see what happens so uh, yeah, the link for that will be down below if you want to get involved with that server. Um, and as I say, pop in there at 1 o'clock on Thursday. Make sure your mic is all up and running and everything. You don't necessarily need an external mic like I've got. I'm sure you might be... Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do it as long as you've got some sort of built-in mic to your computer, which most computers, I believe, do have these days. So, um, you know, you might be able to do it with that. So... Yeah, so you just have to kind of set that up properly and make sure that's all, all sorted. And, uh, yeah, be it's going to be very exciting today. I'm quite excited because uh, it's going to be something new. It's going to be something different. It might go completely to pot and it might not work at all. Or it might, it might be really, really good. Or it might just be somewhere in between. I don't know. But it's exciting to find out. So, anyway, I'll leave it there. Don't forget, if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you liked the video, or, well, liked the podcast, then please do whack a like on it. Also, if you would like this podcast uploaded to a 
uh, another area, so iTunes, podcasts, or whatever it's called, I don't know, or someone suggested a Google Google Podcasts app, I think it was, they suggested. If I get enough interest, and really I'd need about 50 people, I'd need like around 50 people for me to warrant the time of looking into this and, and, and doing it, because I've really not got the time to to upload it to another podcast server or whatever. I don't, you know, I'd probably need to set up accounts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I need to be focusing on other areas of my business at this point. But if I get a good number of people, you know, centered around this, who keep saying to me, oh, well, I want it on this or I want it on that, then I'll probably give in at some point and we'll put it on another another app as well for other people to listen to on the go or whatever you want. So, because uh, I know on YouTube, when you close the YouTube app, you know it the, the the audio goes so you know you have to have the audio or you have to have the app open in your pocket all the time and it's a bit of a nuisance that so i can get where people are coming from with that um so if you would like that to be the case then drop a comment down below keep pestering with me with it and if enough of you keep pestering me with it over a certain period of time then i will eventually do it um but with that being said i will leave it there guys thank you very much for watching um and i will see you in the next one which is going to be keeping reselling fresh so any comments questions or queries with that drop them down below and uh, i will see you very soon